Hey guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting to to the finale of My Happy Marriage. So let's go ahead and get started with episode 11 in 3, 2, 1, go. Um, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. It'll be the only way for you guys to get out of diet. And of course, she doesn't want that. She's so pretty. And she married the asshole. Did she just travel back in time?
the natural childbirth bra. I couldn't do it. Mm -mm, Jesus. Oh. Hello. Yep. Happy Thanksgiving to you too. Well, um, right now I'm recording. I'm basically going to be recording all day today because I got a whole bunch of stuff to do. Um, show called My Happy Marriage. No, no, no. She works later on in the night. Okay. Alright, I'll talk to you later. Alright, alright, love you too, bye-bye. Okay, sorry, was not expecting the call. Even though, like, my dad and my mom are, and my aunt and uncle are the ones that I have, like, even if it's on Do Not Disturb, I still get a call. <laughs> but, for the people who see this tomorrow, happy belated Thanksgiving to the ones who celebrate it. Okay, let me say this. I get it where she's just like, I need to lock away her powers. But if she had only known, only known what it was going to be like for her, I think she would have changed her mind. But I get it. It was so for her safety. And when the time came. Mm -hmm. It really was. And I feel for her. You need to get some sleep. It's pretty bad. It's a little bit better. gonna throw them away are you yeah but I feel like you're in another nightmare now because you don't get to see your freaking husband and I want him back in your life I know I miss cool oh, oh he looks so good oh, baby 
try to do everything to get you back, baby. He's like, how can I eat one if I'm not with my husband? No, the room, the room's nice. Everything's nice, but it's not what she wants. That's what she wants. Hey. Because that's her husband. I mean, well, really, her fiance, my future husband, and she loves him. Yeah, but you're like closing her off. Not what she wants. I give a flying F about the damn rules. <laughs> I'm just saying. You don't want that. I don't want that. I mean, like, yeah, you good looking. You are. But you not kudo. You do not have that sexy behind voice. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, he does have a really nice voice. I mean, truly, like, yeah, make me melt, but not like, <laughs> I'm sorry. for the longest time. So come on now. What about you? Huh? Um. Ah, oh, shit. Never mind. I don't like it. She want to go home. She 
you know what? Let me, let me say this real quick. If it was me, I'd be sneaking out. I'd be like, hey, where you going? Oh, out into town. Nowhere in particular. Because they are so far out from town. They in like the middle of the damn forest. Yeah, but as a family that's related by blood, you, you're you not letting her, you know, be free. You're still trapping her just as much as her father was. And you may think it's loving, but to her, it's not. I love the fact that she's giving her a choice, which is sweet. Because sometimes not everybody has choices. Oh. oh, baby. She gonna try though. 
Let her go. That's some bullshit. Thank God she's going to be able to go and see him. It's like when you go to see a man, he comes up with the military for so long when he's been deployed. <laughs> You know, honestly, I didn't think about that. That could really work. We have to try. And that makes the most sense. He He's unconscious, and she's the only one who can wake, her, wake him up. And that's so freaking cute. Oh, my God, I can't. I can't do much. Stop it. I can't. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Okay, I love the fact that, you know, Arata is being a very protective cousin towards her, even though, like, there are moments where he, when he was talking about husband-ish, I'm like, hold on, you want to marry her or something? No, I don't like that. I don't like the sound of that. Mm -mm. Or are you just, you're, you're saying and putting these things out so that she knows, but... I don't think I still like this. I, I do like him. Don't get me wrong. He is a very handsome character. And if I was not in love with Kudo, uh, he would definitely still, he still is, in my opinion, a second best. So hopefully if he does come back in season two, whenever the heck we do get season two, he gets a little bit more um, development and attention because he seems very interesting. And I love the fact that he does want to protect Mio and the family name just as much as the grandfather does but it, in my opinion i feel like in the way he's doing it he's a, he's doing it a little too like overbearing and overprotective because you can see both him and his grandfather are very much hella protective over mio because mio was like kind of the last of her generation and stuff besides the cousin and so because of the fact is his her mom sumi 
you know, rest in peace or soul, gave this power to Mio and was like, hey, it's when the time comes, you can choose or not to use it. And she finally accepts it. Everyone's like, hey, yo, we got to protect the hell out of her because she's like this. But then also making the deal with the emperor and being like, she can't have no other relationship outside of her family who has supernatural abilities because if she does, then the family's in trouble. She's in trouble. She might get punished or worse from him. I'm like, but something tells me he is going to find out, especially with this last episode that I do have left. They might not show it, but something tells me when we do get into the beginning of season two, that's going to be the first big initial things. Now, my my other thing is wondering, because when when this, I think when these two episodes came out, the initiative for me was I, when I saw Sumi's mom, I immediately thought that was Mio. And I'm thinking like, oh, it's time travel, like technically what her power is. But it isn't, it kind of is, but it kind of isn't because she gets to go back in time and see all these little moments of her mom up until, you know, she finally gets, well, her mom finally sends the power off into the tree and giving it to Mio eventually. Then she gets to say goodbye to her mom, which she gets this moment that she's won it for such the longest time because she has not seen her mom in so many years. I mean, you know, that's the same thing with all of us. It's like, you know, our moms... Our parents in general are so super duper important to us and we know that they're not going to be here forever and that's the hardest thing that a lot of us are really we realize you know when we're young when we're kids they're like oh okay they're gonna be here forever and, and such and then when you're an adult and you realize how older they are from you and you're younger than them and you get to ha have all these sweet times, but you know eventually one day those are going to be over. And it's going to be hard. It's truly hard for anyone who has lost a parent um, to essentially try to move on. It's some people, they can't, especially if they are really close with their parents and such. And sometimes it just really takes time. Some people can snap back out of it and continue on with life I mean it's been over 10 years since my grandma has passed and you know today is a day of thanks and it, it's sad not to have her here and a lot of other family members but you know like they're with you they're here in spirit but you just still physically want them here with you and you know sometimes you can't have that happen and and I get it like, truly I feel for her but go ahead and pause the video and I will see you guys in one second for the final episode okay Episode 12 in 3, 2, 1, go. One thing I also forgot to say, dealing with that and the fact that she's going to wake Kudo up. What if his dreams are like his future relationship with Mio? Like, the married officially and having kids? Oh my god. Girl, that's a fucking nightmare. Didn't she hold his hand though? Bring him back.
That's her. So she's got to catch her herself. Oh, hell no. Nah. But she's got to do it. Gotta go through it. So make her confront her like worst fears, which was the hell and traumatic moments that she had in that house, just to get to him. I get that, but like. Oh, baby, that's your deep thoughts. Get good. Mm. Mm. No. He accepts you as you are, baby, and you know that. And yes, that's true, but when Kudo came into your life, it wasn't hell anymore.
As a husband should. As a husband should. Just say it. It is. That's right. We take your man. Because, see, as I said, I told you he was going to find out.
Badass baby. <laughs> Ooh. If he ain't dead then he dead now. I mean I'm sorry. <laughs> he doesn't go to flames technically. Your mommy would be so proud of you, baby. He knows. He knows. Oh, baby. That's all she wants. No. <laughs> That's love. That's true fucking love. Oh no! We all know.
Oh my god. So sweet. Oh my god. I mean, look, once again, I'm happy she got her she got her final ending. That's all I wanted for her. She's happier. Nobody gets a crap about her sister. Hopefully she don't get a parents the second in second season and such. But this was really good. This was like truly I think at the time, like when it was airing, it definitely was underrated because it was competing with so many other shows. And then because it was on Netflix, um, which, oh God, I've had talks about this before, even when JoJo Stone Ocean was out and stuff. I, I have a little situation, I think we all do, with Netflix and how, in my opinion, depending on the show, not, I'm not going to say every anime, but just some. I, I don't, I, one thing I do like about this, it, it was coming out weekly, unlike Judge's Bizarre Adventure. Hold on. So pretty. Aww. My God. <laughs> that was so freaking cute. Okay, but continuing on. Netflix decided to release this weekly, which was a really good thing. Unlike what they did when um, Stone Ocean was out, where it was, okay, we're releasing it all in bulk. Because, I mean, the biggest thing is what our, our new norm is, is streaming everything, watching it all in bulk in like a couple of days, and then instantly talking about it, and kind of moving on from it and such. Especially like when I was starting in anime reactions and going uh, doing two animes weekly two binging ones and then still binging with stuff um and then doing weeklies and everything especially with like my with my patreon stuff and ish um i really just liked the fact that stone ocean got the binge sort of moment because it didn't to me it, it was done so quickly and next thing you know people weren't talking about it and then of course the situations of oh hey we don't know when the heck part two was coming out when part three is coming out and then out of nowhere it would just come out and the hype for it slowly but surely died but i think if they continued on a weekly basis like they did with this there would have been a lot more hype for it so that's my one little thing about that but with this and their relationship between these two like they're, they're so good together, and I'm glad that, you know, 
they were able to find each other even throughout the situations of what they had to do just to get to each other. And the fact is that, like, Neil's final opponent to getting to Kudo was herself and being in her inner thoughts and being like, I should go back to the way that I was. Everything that I was was her safety net. Even though it was hell for her, she was in her way safe and she was like, I'm, I'm satisfied with this, even though I'm getting tortured and stuff. But once he came into her life and changed her hell into a really soft, simple piece of life and being with him, that's when she started looking at things differently. But because she was still holding grudges and all these angry moments and thoughts about herself being like, no, I should go ahead and go back to where I was and that he doesn't deserve me. It was only up until how Mio has grown from episode one till now that she could finally be able to just face even herself just to get to Kudo, which was really sweet. And I'm glad that she was the one to be able to get him out of it because out of anybody, she was the only one to do it. Now, the fact is like with Arata also leaving and saying, hey, I no longer need to protect you. That's also because, you know, Kudo is back in the mix and such. I do want to see a rematch between these two. So hopefully that happens when we get a second season. Um... And such but this was really good everything about this was just super adorable very lovely loving and wholesome even with like the dark moments because i didn't think we were gonna have a lot of dark moments in this show but we had dark moments and the way that they were done even though they were dark moments they were still very much interesting to watch i'm glad that mio finally got to have a few little bit of moments even seeing her mother again, even if it was in a dream sequence. But, of course, everything that she's done, like I said, Mio's mom would definitely be a pro uh, be proud of her and such. But here's hoping going into season two once again. Her sister has nothing to do with it. We don't get to see her sister, but something tells me she's still going to be somewhat in it for the plot reasons and such like that. I would like to see, I don't remember his name, Um, the guy who also had a crush on Mio as well at least something on him and unfortunately yeah her sister too which would be the nice thing but that was only because i care about <laughs> her previous love and chest but this was just this was good this is everything that i honestly wanted it to be and hope that it was i mean because everybody was hyping this up when this was airing and people were asking me to watch it and i was like i, I don't have time i was like i want to but i don't have time just like another series that by the time y'all see this tomorrow, I think is also airing on Fridays as well. It's that, um, it's very similar to, um, To Your Eternity. It's the friend something show about the girl who is, um, of course, she, she is an immortal and she's going around and the story is really more about time and such. And from what people had told me, it's very sad and people want me to watch it and I'm like, bruh, I have no time between... So many things. Like, it's that show, another isekai show that I want to watch that someone recommended to me. Um, another show that deals with a girl and a guy and such. It's three other shows. And I'm like, I have no time. <laughs> you think I have time? I don't have time. But other than that, guys, that is our reaction towards the entirety of season one of My Happy Marriage. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel and make videos every single day. Enjoy the Master Squad. And of course, I will see you guys all officially next time for whatever the heck I'm about to do next. Because honestly, even I still don't know. I know I have some plans in the works for some things. But we shall wait. See you until then. I will see you guys all next time. Bye.